quarterbacks are going to get injured. Is there anything, though, that coaches can do or that players can do, the way they play, to help prevent injuries or even uh, reduce the likelihood of injury? Now, nobody really expects a player to go out and play his best when he's worried about getting hurt. You can't do that. You've got to play the game uh, with some degree of lack of concern for your well-being. You've got to just go play hard, go play as well as you can play. But there are a few things about playing the quarterback position that I think are pretty important to trying to stay healthy. And we put such an emphasis on the position on, uh, especially in the NFL, you see all the time rules are changing, things are happening to try to help quarterbacks stay healthy. But at the college level and at the high school level, it seems like we just throw our hands up in the air and say, well, sometimes players get hurt. When there really are a few things we could do as coaches and as players to try to reduce the likelihood of quarterback injuries. I wanna go through a, a, a couple of things that I've just taken notes on over the years and in observations of how players have gotten injured um, and just want to want to share that with you. First of all, we've talked about this with regard to pass protection, but getting the ball out quickly, having a quick passing game, I think is so important to many things, but also to preventing the quarterback from getting hit. It's literally impossible to get a shot on the quarterback if the quarterback is getting the ball out quickly. Uh, unless it's an illegal hit, in which case you're going to get um, 15 more yards. So getting the ball out quickly is, is the most obvious. Another thing is knowing when to slide, knowing how to avoid unnecessary uh, collisions. If a quarterback is scrambling and he has a good idea uh, of down and distance, knowing where the first down marker is. If you've got the first down and you've got space and you're starting to feel the secondary, if you've already gained you know, 5, 10, 15 yards, obviously nobody in the secondary is concerned anymore about the pass. And so they're going to converge on a now running back quarterback. And so if the space is there, the best thing to do is, uh, if you've got the first down, is take a slide. If you're near the sideline, the best thing to do is to get out of bounds. Um, the, the other thing that's a little bit more difficult is sometimes if you're in a tight situation, the best thing for a quarterback to do is to go head first, just like any running back would. But there are ways that receivers have done this over the years that I've found is really effective in avoiding taking huge hits. And that is when you break through to the second level and you're gaining yardage, sometimes you might need to go head first to try to get the first down. But it is very difficult for a defender to get a helmet or shoulder pad collision to a quarterback's helmet if the quarterback is lunging at the feet of the defender. And so if you're in a little bit of a tighter space, you're not quite able to slide, but you can lunge forward at the feet of a defender, that defender is likely going to fall on top of you, but it's very difficult if you're diving head first at a defender's feet for them to get in position to make a helmet to helmet con collision. And so if you're far enough away where you're coming at each other this way and you can slide, then that's one way to do it. But if you're too close, the best thing to do is just lean forward and go at, right at the shins of the defender because he can't hit you that way. Um, Russell Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks in the league period, but he's one of the best quarterbacks at avoiding taking unnecessary hits. Um, I've seen Russell Wilson repeatedly escape, extend plays, obviously has a great knowledge of down and distance, gets the first down, and he even holds the ball out. Almost every time he runs out of bounds, he will hold the ball out ahead of where his feet are so that the spot of the ball is a little bit uh, more advanced. So he is a very, very smart player, and a lot of quarterbacks can learn things from him in terms of how to avoid hits. He's not necessarily the breakaway speed guy that Lamar Jackson is or like Michael Vick was or uh, RG3 was, but he's incredibly quick and he is elusive 
but when he gets to that second level, he doesn't do a whole lot of juking and trying to make people miss because once you get to that second level, you've got linemen and linebackers coming behind you, and if you slow down to make a spin move or to try to juke uh, a defensive back, a lot of times you're going to take a shot in the chin and get knocked out. Um, I've actually did that when I was playing, and, and it wasn't I, I wasn't knocked out, but I had about six stitches right in my chin because I made a spin move, and a guy trailing behind me just leveled me right under my face mask um, and drove me into the ground. Um, so that's something that uh, is, is really good for young quarterbacks to learn, and I think it would be really beneficial if coaches spent a little bit more time on this. Now, the big topic of the week, obviously, is the injury to Tua at Alabama and some of the controversy, which I'm surprised. It's, well, I'm really not surprised. Usually, there would be a little bit of controversy surrounding a situation where a coach is playing a player where it's probably not best. But for some reason, when it's Nick Saban, everybody just seems to say, well, he's a genius, so we can't question his judgment. Well, I don't care how much of a genius Nick Saban is. He did not make a good decision. I am I am sticking to that. I know that uh, as fans, we don't have all the information that coaches have, and there may be some information that I'm not aware of that would possibly cause me to be a little bit more sympathetic. But just in general, based on what I know, there are a couple of reasons why I can understand Tua being in the game against Mississippi State at all, regardless of what quarter it was. And I'm not talking about any games the rest of the season. I'm just talking about this one game. The only thing I can think of as to why a quarterback would, or why Tua should be in this game is if Saban is worried about his rhythm being affected, or not only his rhythm, but the rhythm of the entire offense. If you shift to a backup quarterback, Jones, uh, against Mississippi State, and then you continue with him against Western Carolina and save Tua for Auburn, is that going to put your offense in some sort of a disruption to where they've got to respond and recover and get reacclimated to Tua coming back in the game? Um, I, I don't think that's the case uh, because of a couple of things. Number one, Alabama's offense has been all, outstanding all year. To keep in mind, Alabama's offense almost got them back into the game against LSU. I mean, they scored late. The The score wasn't quite indicative. But the, the whole game of LSU-Alabama was LSU's offense giving Alabama's defense a beatdown. Alabama's offense and Tua himself were, were very productive in that game. And so the idea that Alabama's offense is, is in some sort of – you know, funk or like the Cleveland Browns are right now. You know, the Alabama offense is not sort of figuring stuff out like like the way, you know, a lot of the, the stars are with the Browns and Baker Mayfield and the coach and all that kind of stuff. Alabama's not doing that. They've got a solid offense. The second thing that might cause me to think, well, Tua needs to play a little bit, is just Tua himself. Is there some sort of doubt that Tua is going to be able to come back and be solid against Auburn if he takes a couple of weeks off? Again, I can't imagine that that's the case because Tua was so good just recently in, in uh, recent years with, with the national championship game, coming in the second half, having a great performance, and looking like he played all year. And he'd been sitting on the bench behind Jalen Hurts the whole, the whole year. So um, I just don't understand the, the rationale uh, with Saban here. Now, I'm not at all accusing Saban of uh, – not caring about his players. I can't comment to that because I don't know Nick Saban. I just know what I've observed. There obviously do seem to be um, some different types of coaching styles when you look at Dabo Sweeney and you look at P.J. Fleck and you look at James Franklin and even Urban Meyer, the way he used to have a relationship with Tebow. It doesn't appear that Saban is that personable of a guy. Um, and, and he does sort of sort of carry this mantra of, you know, just do your job, which th there is there is value in that. I mean, any coach who coaches football knows that you've got to have some sort of respect for a system, and you've got to teach your guys to trust in each other, to trust in the mission of the team, and to do your job. But sometimes Saban comes across a bit cold, 
And then when a situation like this happens, when a, a kid that is so well liked and just seems like an outstanding person like Tua gets this injury that's that's a freak injury, there's nothing on that play that a coach or Tua could have done differently. It was a routine play. Um, the injury actually reminded me a lot of Bo Jackson uh, with his career-ending injury against the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, what what a strange sort of play that ended the football career of probably the greatest athlete I've ever seen in my life. Um, and so you can't blame anybody for the actual play where Tua got hurt. hurt. Um, but it's just a situation that draws a lot of questions. And um, I, I do find it annoying that no one uh, seems to be in a reasonable way uh, questioning Saban's judgment. I, I'm not trying to give hate to Saban. I'm not trying to pour, you know pile on to you know an unfortunate situation. I don't cheer for Alabama, frankly, because I'm I I don't like Saban. But um, I respect Saban and I respect what he does. Um, but but I think this decision was a poor decision on his part. So uh, that's my take on it. Uh, if you got any responses or thoughts or questions, I'd love to hear it. But in general, we do have a lot of quarterback injuries, particularly in college and high school. And I don't think coaches spend enough time, some of them don't spend any time on, you know, how do we uh, play smart so that we reduce the likelihood of a quarterback getting injured. So. Enjoy football. Look forward to talking again next week.